<laughs> you hit a rev limiter in your electric car on a 2-3 upshift. What a ridiculous thing. This is the all new 2025 Hyundai Ioniq 5N and it's Hyundai's first take on a performance EV and it's pretty wild. It is unlike anything we've ever seen. Stay tuned for the full review. I am Jason Camisa. I am a veteran automotive journalist. And I'm Vin Atra. I have owned a lot of cool cars, love driving cars, and I've got brought here to, uh, I don't know, drive this car. You are selling yourself short. It has nothing to do with your old cars. It has to do with your like sort of pro driving e tattoos. It's the <laughs> fact that you have a beanie cap and tattoos and that offsets my oldness. <laughs> they uh, they brought us in to mesh professional journalism with idiot YouTuber guy. I you know I really resent that professional. Hold on, wait, wait. There, there we go. go. You're pretty. I mean, you're pretty professional. You know what you're I doing when it comes to car just, reviews. <laughs> It's not rocketing at you. Come on. Oh, he's a germ of your germ phobe, aren't you? No, I'm not. I don't care about anything. Really? <laughs> <laughs> now we're in the uh, new 2025 Hyundai Ionic 5N. And this is Hyundai's take on a performance EV. Yes. It is their first full performance EV. Full first EV that's in the N lineup. And it's a pretty impressive car. I mean, the stats are huge. 601 horsepower. Unless you hit that button that says N. GB, which makes it 641 for 10 seconds at a time. Insane. 568 pound-feet of torque, yep. and they distribute the power front and rear, 235 horsepower to the front, and 406 horsepower to the rear wheels. Right. I mean, this is no joke. It is, I mean, my ass tells me, maybe we'll try, track it later, try to find out whether it, uh, that claim is my ass is accurate. Three seconds to 60. Under. Wow. Like, yeah. That's it is, ripper it is territory. Unconscionably quick. And I had the privilege of uh, seeing this car on Laguna Seca a couple months ago, and it is a weapon on track too. This is a, uh, this is really uncharted territory for anyone, right? The idea of an all electric sort of hot hatch SUV type situation. And the crazy thing is, it's based on an Ionic Five. Yep. But it is a far far shot away from an Ionic Five. They've changed. Nearly everything. So remember one thing, N, as a performance brand name, in case you're wondering where that came from, this car was done by Albert Biermann, who's a German. Um, he ran he ran Hyundai's, he's just retired, ran Hyundai's vehicle dynamics program for N. Uh, Biermann cut his teeth on the E30 M3 race car. Back, oh, oh, you're getting some sort of warning. Something is happening. Nothing happens uh, either, I, I but yeah. The, I said the word German. <laughs> They're very upset about that. Yes, they do not uh, want you to know that. <laughs> Beerman retired, but he ran M for many, 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 many years. And uh, and if you wonder what letter comes after M, eh, I think we figured out why they called it N. So this is really, an, you know, an, if, if we think about in the world in terms of BMW's strategy, this is an Mification of a car. So it's not an X5 M40i; it's an X5 M. And if you and if you follow racing, you'll see that Hyundai and their N division have been absolutely decimating in WRC rally and also TCR in road racing. And they won both of their classes at the Nürburgring 24 hour this past year. Like Hyundai end division is cranking out Fire. serious race cars and winning and dominating. I mean, this is the way you do it. You come in, what, look, think about when M started, right? M started with the E30 M3. What is it? The winningest touring car in the history of the sport. So, you know, the Hyundai is no longer content with just saying, oh, it's good for a Hyundai. They brought in the big dogs, they went for it, and this is the first EV from them, but also the first really sporty mass market EV for anyone. Yeah, and I think Hyundai is also in a really unique position because they are inherently not a cool brand. They have to work a lot harder at making a performance enthusiast car than any other brand has to work. True. And I honestly think it shows. Okay, so what they do, they took the Ionic 5, first thing they did was lowered it by 0.6 of an inch. Um, and then they, they put the end sport seats from the Elantra N in here, which, and they're good, Phenomenal. but they lowered the H point, which is where your hips are in this yeah. car, 1.6 inches relative to the regular Ionic 5. Wow, and it gives it a really sporty dynamic feel right I mean, off the bat. You know, you talk to engineers who will change H point by three millimeters or two millimeters and like yeah we did this for the dynamism 
Um, 1.6 inches is a massive change. And what happens is you ultimately wind up feeling like you're driving in this car rather than on it, which you 100%. do in most SUVs. Yep. Um, that's a huge difference. Then they of course did the body kit. So the car is three inches longer than a regular um, Ionic 5, but that's all just due to the front spoiler and the diffuser at the back, which is kind of amazing to say the word diffuser. Oh yeah, Hyundai, it looks that's awesome. electric. Um, and then it's an inch and a half wider because of fender flares. And I mean, this thing is packing a pretty huge size tire on a 21 inch wheel. Yeah. Forged, I mean, 21 inch forged wheel. So they're, they're not messing around. Again, the Enification, right? Enification, this is a full N line product, N product, it's not an N line product. And to that point, behind the 21 inch wheels is a nearly 16 inch brake rotor, 15.7 inch front rotor. Remember on a car that because it's electric, you won't be using the brakes in normal driving. Like that's there entirely for track use. Right. It's not gonna be used the rest of the time. That's how serious they were. There's also modifications to the body in white and I'm going to pull out a little cheaty car because I'm not that much of a nerd. Um, they, Hyundai says they, it says, Hyundai says, Hyundai says that they added 42 additional welding points to the chassis and 6.9 additional feet of adhesive, all resulting in 11% increase in torsional rigidity for the body in white. Wow. And that's before they make any other changes. So like, this is kind of nutty stuff. Yeah, and honestly, hearing some of the Hyundai engineers talk, it's uh, it's really impressive the level of depth that they go into on developing this chassis. Talking about that they went back in and redesigned control arm bushings yep. and shock mounts to be stiffer bushings to give you more feedback and less NVH. Like they're really going deep into the chassis and making sure that this thing is pretty you just, know enthusiast focus ready to rip and making it's not a sport package on it it's, it's in it's, its own model again same this is the same strategy that beermont did at bmw you know like m cars a different body in white so they they said to us that it doesn't share a single comp suspension component with the regular ionic 5 which is exactly to compare right. it to m i mean three series versus m3 right the suspension is entirely different the brakes are different the bodywork wider yeah. like it's the the it's right thing yeah it's the right thing to do Right, so they they also went. I love this. Consider taking Cons a break. Consider taking a break. Right, guys, we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> hey, did you know this content is brought to you by the Haggerty Drivers Club? <laughs> if you like our content, you can consider joining the Haggerty Drivers Club, which includes unlimited flat bed tows, uh, access to our award-winning magazine, and our valuation tools. Uh, there's a link below. You should check it out. See, it told us. It told us to do it. Um, more importantly, though, more importantly, new steering rack that's quicker than the previous rack, uh, than the regular rack. Um, and then two things that I didn't like are the kind of the coolest things in the world. A, a triangular third mounted, uh, third high mounted center chimsel, center high mounted. I'll light. say that that's very cool because uh, when you go to the N Motorsport headquarters, you look at all their WRC cars. What they got? Very WRC inspired. It's very racing. I mean, I love that when that started in like Cyan FRS and I loved it. Or uh, Mazda RX-8 had that yeah. too. But more importantly, the coolest feature on this whole car, I'm sorry for the entire development team that spent billions on it. Uh, the coolest feature is the rear wiper because all hot hatches need a rear wiper. All hot hatches need a rear wiper. I, I Even just, the Lancer Evolution that was a sedan put a rear wiper on it. And yeah, you know yes. what? It's the best thing about it. And that you don't do a hot hatch without, well, two things. Number one, wiper. Number two, power floor it. It's gonna pain. Oh my god. Oh, it's so it fast. Like, it, it was, that was a rolling 30 mile an hour burnout. Mind you, and that's in normal mode because this car has all of the modes. Okay, we're gonna talk about the modes. You gotta so, talk about the modes. Right? It's overwhelming modes. I'm gonna put it in sport while we talk. Yes, please do. Yeah. But while you do that, oh god, hold on. <laughs> I, I'm trying to, I want you to do ignition. So everyone's going to be talking about this. Okay. Okay. So, so you, the car sound. But can what you, you do me a favor? Do? Can you shift into a lower gear with the left pedal? Oh no, it doesn't. There are, all right. It doesn't work. There are so no, many. No, you have to be in a specific mode to be able to have it in manual mode. I, I can't. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> it, it's addicting to, to give it a little goose because it's so quick. Which the audience doesn't quite realize that that was 268 miles an hour instantly. No. <laughs> um. So, okay. There are. Uh, there's is, nothing going on and it's beeping it's at us. It's just saying warning only. Well, if you're warning me for an onlyness, um, all right. So there are, I, I, I wish we had enough time in this in this review to talk about how many modes and sort of micro changes you can make to this whole thing. Go watch Doug. He'll review all the modes. It is, 
unbelie- it, unbelievable is the wrong word. It's overwhelming. It, it's overwhelming. It, right now, the car is in a sport mode and it has the engine noise on and it's overwhelming. I don't know how to shut it off. I can't shift it. It's, it's doing all sorts of things. It's, it's a lot freaking out. Yeah. yeah. But the, there are, so you're in supersonic mode now. Can we, can we hear what this noise sounds like? Which, so this is more of like a traditional EV noise. And, and there's evolution. Wait, you wait, could wait, pick through more. a couple different types of noises. Oh, I kind of like this one. That one's kind of good. I right. kind of like this one. So what it does is N Active Sound Plus does has your choice of these three modes. But then the other thing it does, which is real, we've never seen before, is simulates a manual trans, uh, a dual clutch, eight speed dual clutch automatic on a two liter four cylinder turbo. And that is the gimmickiest thing of all gimmicks. And yet I love it. I'll say as very, very hardcore nerds, uh, you could you could figure it out, but if someone just jumped in the car and drove it, I don't even know if you would be able to tell that it's not an electric car because the shifts have a simulated like shifting point. It's not like a seamless dual clutch. There's a little bit of a kick. Uh, it the power is simulated to an ice uh, ice engine where it's. You know, if you're at 1,000 RPM and you floor it, it feels sluggish. And if you're at 5,000 RPM, it feels fast. Yeah. Like they simulate a torque curve. They do. It's a very believable situation. It simulates engine braking by gear too. Yeah. So you downshift through three gears, you're going to get more, more regen. It's regen, but you know, it's simulated engine braking. It's so natural and so good. I mean, I think a diehard car enthusiast is going to realize pretty totally. quickly it's not real. But I think it's, if I do NE shift, here we go. Hold on. Now, all right, now, Active Sound Plus, hold on, go into, now bang through a couple gears. Okay, so now, engine noise. Engine noise. There we go, blip, blip. Down to first. <laughs> I mean, you hit the limiter. Yeah, it's limiter and it, and it, bah, like, it, it hard cut it, limiter. It, that felt like it slammed on the brakes. Yeah. It, it's insane how good this is. Like It's a real, it feels, the noise is a little, like, you could tell it's digital. But, but it I, feels real. To me, this sounds like every soundtrack of every other internal combustion car. They're playing through the speakers that all the wah, wah. It sounds like somebody doing that through a toilet paper roll. Right. They all the same shit sound, but it's so close to it being real in all of the ways that even like a the, th that little shift. that little shift you felt the, the transmission yeah. shift like yeah. you you felt driveline lash in it did you notice that yeah you, you felt, felt that little boom, boom, boom. right which yeah. is what you always want in a like an ice car so it's they did a phenomenal job at replicating yeah. that so if you have the the urge it's there i mean look <laughs> I mean, I love, well, for, okay, but I, I love that there's like an upshift. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, also, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you're about to hit the rev limiter of your fake thing, but it all works so well. My only problem with it is if you're going to give me the, the sound of a two liter four cylinder in a car that does zero to 60 in three seconds, why not give me a flat plane? Right. Why not give me a V12? Right. Let's just hear his limiter real quick. <laughs> I said the same thing. I said, <laughs> if you can make an engine, if you can make up an engine, yeah. right? You're telling me that this thing's only be, revving to 7,500 right. RPM. No, this needs to be a Gordon Murray, like that cost worth 12,100 RPM. For yeah, sure. why isn't it an ITB yeah. for like two liter that revs to 12K you know, and it just sings? You know they're gonna do it over the They have to, they time. have to. It's gonna be amazing. Like this is simulating a Elantra N, yeah. which is fine. That's a it's good totally car fine. too, but it just, if you could fake it and you don't have to have the engineering of making an engine like that be mass market Real. capable, yeah. Yeah. like make this thing feel as special as it is. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be coming. Yeah. There's, it's such low hanging fruit that there's like, I can't imagine a world in which they're not gonna do that. You're telling me a team full of people that lowered a seat 1.6 inches and did 42 additional welds, didn't think, hey, this thing should rev. 42, yeah. This thing should rev to 12,000 RPM. They had to have said it. That conversation happened. Yeah, but you know, like some, some, one of the other engineers is like, yeah, but we can't because that's gonna make our Elantra N look bad because it only revs to 6,700. Right, right. So I don't, you know, stupid corporate shit. But, um, but the, whether you like that N E shift plus N active sound plus stuff, 
it is so well done. It's well that, done. You know, I, my point is, if it's going to be authentic, like if it's, I don't like ameliorated oh. engine sounds. Give me a real engine noise. There is no engine here. If you're going to do it, do it well and have fun with it. And this has got a sense of humor. Because by the way, I think you can, you can also shift your jet. I love that. Oh yeah. This one's so much cooler. The evolution is evolution. great. And then you can shift your, your supersonic jet. Hold on. I don't even know how this works. I haven't even tried this. Me neither. We gotta slow down. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that shift was <laughs> dropped a sledgehammer. The, the front right, the front right speaker had like a uh, backfire. It's a sonic boom. Okay. Uh, I like, so this is called supersonic. I like the evolution one. The evolution one's pretty cool. And we can make it, by the way, like that was nice and quiet. There we go. The we evolution one sounds fun. like it's like a, a merge between like an F1 car and like a two stroke dirt bike. All right, let's leave it like that. We'll play stuck for the background. I've never heard of. <laughs> but that it's sounds a, cooler. It sounds cool. I'm fine. Look, I'm fine with all of them because you can turn them off if you want. But to me, the, all the sound effects would be completely would be completely and totally unacceptable if the experience in the car didn't 100% match what we're hearing. Right. But like, <laughs> this feels like it sounds like this. Faster, Jesus. I don't. It's yeah. It's no. alarmingly fast, it's alarm. and it's the problem that I think we have with all these EVs, performance EVs, is that they are way faster than you ever need a car to be. Well, really, want, especially in the passenger seat. I mean, um, okay. Other things interesting. Ride quality. We are in the softest mode right now, I believe. Um, everything is totally fine until you get on really bumpy pavement. Um, this thing is. Because again, every single part is bespoke. This thing is genuinely harsh. Not not hard. Well, I wouldn't I say it's harsh. It, it is. You hit a problem. It's right? firm and assertive. It's, it's it's firm on this kind of road. But I took this when we cameras weren't rolling and you were in the car. I took it on a bumpy back road. Oh man, is it it's, bad? Well, it's it's not it's not that it's bad. We're on a. It's that it's full send. Right, because we're on a great road right now. This There's, is very smooth, minimal bumps. You feel a lot of the. You feel a lot of the crevices and you know little things in the road, but it's yep. it feels pretty compliant. So uh, I'm gonna now we're in Sport Plus. It was interesting watching uh, this thing on track. We'll be on track next. We're gonna do that next. But watching it heave around and bounce around in Sport Plus on track, it Sport Plus was just way too stiff even for a smooth track. Yeah, like Laguna Seca. Or again, we're not there yet. We'll get there. But on bumpy roads, you it it. Even the softest setting is just, I would call it too firm, but but I shouldn't because remember, this isn't just a package. It's a full send sort of end car. And so the people who are buying this had better be making an informed decision that they're buying something genuinely special. Right, because if you were gonna buy a Subaru STI, yep. that thing's gonna ride harsh too. Yeah, don't complain about the ride. You know, this is, cause I look at this car because it's a hot hatch. I think of like evolution, STI, obviously, like things that don't exist anymore, but those cars didn't ride like no. M cars. They rode more like hot hatches. Yep. And those were kind of a bit more uh, rough around the edges. I mean, and to get into that, like the car in here, like the fit and finish is great. Yep. Interior is very nice. Seats are phenomenal. You know, the materials are, are good. A lot of like uh, synthetic type materials, but they're all very nice, like blue trimmed uh, interior. It's, it's, feels premium it feels forty-five thousand bucks this is by the time you get to the end model this is quite a lot more money this is 67.5 um it is as a full performance envelope suv sort of thing it, i think it makes perfect sense right but it is i don't think this is a sixty-five thousand dollar interior but it's a sixty-five thousand dollar car overall for sure it's yeah it's it's definitely seventy thousand dollars worth of performance oh, yeah. uh you know for me i do drive mostly older cars so getting into something that has all these screens and features and stuff i guess it i get skewed and feel like it does feel kind of expensive but it's a good topic to talk about because i've already seen these things selling for twenty thousand dollars over asking price and if you're at ninety thousand dollars no for this car nearly 90 67 plus 20 you're at eighty seven thousand dollars for this car that's a rough that's, I mean, that's 
we could do a whole episode. I could do a whole series on cursing dealers and their markup. But I mean, you know, I have to judge every car based on how the manufacturer prices it. Yeah, that's the only fair thing to do. Yep. And at sixty-seven-five, it's. I would struggle to find another sort of performancey SUV. I, this this car occupies a middle ground between a hot hatch and a hot SUV. Yeah, right. It's a truly. little bit lower, especially here, than an SUV. I wish it were a little bit smaller. Like I wish it was as small as it looks in photos. Right. Because to me, it looks like golf size or Rivian R3 size. It does look golf size, and in person, I would say it's more Q5. Yeah. Like closer to like a Q5 and a Q3. or yeah. No, it's it's quite a. I mean, it's got a big back seat. It's a usable package. It just it's styling. Obviously, it looks like a Tajaro styling from the 1970s. So it looks like a smaller car anyway. Um, but I, I, as a package, I gotta say it's a hell of a car. I wish it were smaller. And these. So the modes. Okay, hold on. We even forget. We forgot about all the modes. So we have the sound. I'm gonna go to this screen if I can find it because there are so many effing screens. So you have. N torque distribution, which allows you to vary the the motor torque, hundred percent front to hundred percent rear. Wow! Um, on Great. a slider in ten percent incre increments. You have N pedal, which has three different levels of programmed in region. You're almost not going to let you do it. This is this. You just oh no, it did let you do it. So you're nah, in. Then I'll be doing it. No, it's not going to do it. So. The part that gets me, and we'll get to that in a second, is there's like this ridiculous complicated matrix of what's available in combination with what other things, yes. and nothing's ever available. Like there's the NGB, which is the N Grin Boost. Um, grin is in, huh, smile, it's stupid, stupid name. Um, but that is not available in half the modes that I, I literally have never- You really, you have to know the specifics of what works with what you said it, is, right. is that like N, pedal won't work in N race or with N torque distribution, but you can run N torque distribution and the dr N drift optimizer together. So it's, then it's not, very confusing. Right, but then not the fakey gears. Like that's, right. you, I can't, every single person got out of the car and said too many modes. Like, and you know, the, 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 the representatives from Hyundai were here like, no, 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 but you can make presets. Yes, there are two presets. Yeah, you There's can a black presets. button and a white button and you can decide which one you want. And I think if you owned it, and you got to know it and you figured out all of the stuff, you can easily navigate it. But for people like us or people just jumping in the car, it's overwhelming. It's, not, it's a lot. It's a I lot to figure out. I think that's a cheap excuse that you just gave to them. If you get, if everyone, including the people who work for Hyundai, get out of the car and say, oh, I was locked in some mode and I couldn't get out of it, you got a problem. Right. And the reason why is it violates the very first law of UX. If I go to end race and, I, and I'm and i in some screen and I put it on end race, it will disable another function that's on a different screen and I can't see that that's just happened. Right. So there are things happening in the background when you select one thing, it's like, you know, like when you go to build a car online and it says, well, okay, by selecting 21 inch forged wheels, you have to now give up the right. score package and you have to get the M score back, yeah. right? That is happening in the background without your knowledge or consent. Yeah. So it's turning things on and off that you didn't mean that you mean to. And by the way, so there's the end track and track mode has four sub modes, which is torque distribution, pedal, race, and then drift optimizer. Then there's an end battery drag mode and a track mode. Then on top of that is a drive settings thing that no one could figure out how to get anything to do. There's a performance options page with like N launch control, N E shift, N active sound, preconditioning, pedal, drift optimizer, race, and torque distribution, again in a different setting. Yeah, it's and, and the N pedal, which is variable regen basically, has three settings. So like N3 jerks the car so, I don't want to say jerks the car, but it stabs the brakes effectively, puts so much regen in that will induce a slide. So it's almost a second drift drift mode because it it's violent when you take your foot off again. Like, Put this all in one screen, please, rather than six screens with like three hamburger menus and five other yeah. things. It's it is a UX catastrophe. Yeah. Even though it has um, memory. Buttons. If you've ever been to a New York City diner, it feels like that. You go in and they got Greek food, they yeah. got Italian food. You can get literally anything, any cuisine from all over the world, yeah. all in one place. It's sort of like that. Like you, well, do that you jump you're... in this and you're like, I have no idea what to set this thing up like. Go through a cheesecake factory menu <laughs> while you're on a racetrack is what is what it's asking you to do. Yeah. Speaking of racetracks, um, let's go to the racetrack. Let's go. 
You're gonna take it. Lagging a sucker. So did you think you'd be in an electric SUV on the Gunaseka ever? Making that noise. <laughs> I mean, I'll behave and... You gotta, you know, you gotta do your pit out, but uh, being in an electric SUV type vehicle on Laguna Seca sounds like it would be the absolute worst time ever. It does. Actually, that's a good point. Like, if you say that statement, it sounds absolutely horrible. But it's surprisingly <laughs> and, not. I mean, Jesus. Okay, so beautiful roll control. Look, it puts the power right down to the rear. That's a drift. Good turn in. Ooh, For such that. a heavy car, it you can understeer it if you drive it too hard, which is really easy in this car. Well, yeah, because 103 miles an hour right there on, you know, on our warm-up lap. Look I've, at that beautiful grip. I've driven this track in a ton of other vehicles. And it's a really high-speed track, but this is a very fast car. From point A to point B, this is a very fast car. So it's super easy to cook turn, overcook turns, pass breaking points. Yeah. Laguna rewards fast cars, right? Which is fun because it's got two big long uphills. And then, <laughs> but then it really spanks cars that are badly tuned because of things like the corkscrew. And, and yet, this big <laughs> sweeping downhill turn that kind of comes over a crest and you lose grip. Yeah. So having a car that's too fast, but not, doesn't have the chassis dynamics, you'll get punished. You're gonna get punished. This thing is not, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna turn it into an electric car for a second. Look at the, oh my God, that beautiful rotation. <laughs> it's crazy that it does that. Okay, the fact that this thing under, oh, look, 103, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, oh, for the crest, we're gonna, Slow, it, it gets a little shimmy over the it crest flat put, out. Put the hip check over yeah. the crest. But the fact that a 5,000 pound crossover SUV will trail brake rotate beautifully like that. Like, look, I'm just gonna give it a little trail brake. and eh, I didn't do it there. But look, <laughs> and, then, oh. and then tail out. Can I end torque distribution this thing? So we're back to the whole problem with, there we go, with, with this thing's, Ooh. Oh my God, yes. When you put it in max rear, yes. it's yes. pretty, pretty tail happy. Oh yes, look, I'm gonna turn in abruptly. Look at oh this. Oh my God. <laughs> Man, this is, okay. When I you got a little goosebumps. I, you should, I got an erection. Um, <laughs> when you get into an electric car on track, like there's a new world, look at that beautiful rotation. And now <laughs> you have like Lucid Sapphire, Porsche Taycan, and then everything else is miserable. Until now, look at Dude, that. It, oh. The fact that you could just stab the brake, turn in, and then it twitches the rear out is very fun. It does it in such a natural, like controllable way. Like I'm, this is the first time I'm in this car with everything totally off. And here I just turn in beautifully, drift down the corner <laughs> screw. Corner worker just shit himself. But like all I'm doing is a little bit of a lift. And this is by the way, not end pedal, which gives you a big like rotation. I was also gonna say, you're also not pushing it to the limit to get it to slide. It's tunable because if you want to slide it, all you have to do is just give it a little kick in and it goes, which is cool because sometimes in a car like this, you have to really drive it over its limit to get okay. it to do a, oh, yeah. a little oversteer. This is happy to do it, look at that. That's amazing. It's incredible. It's, it's, yeah, it's natural. That's what I love about this, it's natural. This just feels like a well-balanced, lighter weight, really good car. The only thing I'll say that isn't well-balanced is how much power it has. Because it's very fast on the straight line. So I realize that for a lot of people, it's actually going to be too much power to navigate around a track because you have to be diligent. That was very nice. <laughs> no, it's like I'm impressed. This is, is this an old guy trying to impress a young guy? Um, I'm very happy with your drift skills. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. Oh, he saved it. He threw a backy in this thing. I was trying to go the other way. I wouldn't do it. But remember, I'm in max rear torque distribution mode. So yeah, we're in like even... full goof off mode. Right. But like if I, oh my God, it's faster when you have both motors, obviously. But look at it. It rotates on the way in and then goes, Dude. it was a little bit brake grabby there for whatever reason, but it goes neutral. Like it's. Yeah. It's, and mm. I, I did a ton of laps in this thing and trying to drive it neat it's also really good yeah, it yeah. doesn't understeer 
uh, it progressively does everything you want it to do. So if it's gonna understeer, you feel it. You feel the tires kind of start to break away. But it's a very predictable car and it hides its weight amazingly. Amazingly. Like you do not realize you're in a 6,000 pound car. It's not 6,000. I mean, maybe with my flip mass in it. Maybe with us. It's, but it's fine. Sorry, you don't realize you're in such a heavy car. Yeah, it is, it, well, tall, right? I mean, the one, the one, all right, I have two criticisms other than the mode situation, which is just unconscious. <laughs> we can't so, get back into that. Now. We're not going to, we're not going to talk about that. The, there's, the steering is kind of dead and I understand we're in a 5,000 pound SUV and you need a big, huge steering motor to, to get these wheels turned. And that is always going to dampen forces. Yeah. So I understand that. On the other hand, other cars like even Panamera has done a good job of coming alive while, while you're sideways. So like right, the, well, didn't really I'm oversteer. So right over there where I was oversteering before, the steering didn't really wake up when the back no. started to come around. And I kind of wish it would have. Um, to ha just to help me. It it's feels a little like a video game, game. Like, yeah. you like because yeah. you don't have that same feedback of, of knowing exactly where the car is. So there, that, and that's a programmable thing that you know they could get. The, my other issue is that the suspension here in is I'm in soft mode is still a little bit pogo y. Look at that. It's great. <laughs> it's you incredible know, it's, how easy it is to save, too. I, well, yeah. I mean, especially going the steering's not telling me anything. No, it's really, it's just a neutral balance car and you have to relearn that you're not listening for auditory cues to get it, to get it straight again. But yeah. um, suspension in so, like Sport Plus mode is just unnecessarily harsh. It, Hyundai was playing videos yesterday for us and you could see the, hold on, I can just do that, hold on. We can put it in terrible ride mode. And which again is the whole like marketing ploy around stiff suspension is faster, but in reality it's not. It's not. And I think, oh, there it is. Yeah, so what we'll feel is like when you're in the corners, if you already, you've got a dum dum dum. Um, it's just kind of, it feels like a rhinoceros on stilts. Very stiff. You could feel it right away that yeah. this is actually kind of a bit jarring because Laguna Seca is one of the smoothest tracks we have in California, but it's still bumpy. And this does not soak up any bumps with it, the it, Sport Plus mode. It, it's inventing its own. And what <laughs> happens is the car ends up being a little bit skittish around the bumps. And when you put it back in soft mode, actually the suspension works and it absorbs stuff. There we go. Look at this beautiful right over the curve. Because it's so heavy, you need the car to actually roll a little bit yep. to put all of the grip down. Yep. If it's just trying to operate on a flat plane, it's just going to understeer. And then, of course, the, the thing, the biggest shock to me is this whole situation where I have engine sounds. I mean, the fact that I can like, you know, I can modulate speed acoustically. Yeah. It's so cool. You know, here we go. Now I know downshift, downshift. And what it won't let me do is torque distribution in this mode. But that's so cool. This is, I mean, look, the Sapphire is an order of magnitude faster and more capable and more well balanced at the limit. But this is otherwise the next best, most fun track car. Which I've you ever would not think of based on its appearance. Yeah, correct. On, rotate. Yeah, I wish. Because I like, we had mentioned before, but you know, you see this car in photos and you expect it to be a GTI. A hot hatch, yeah. small car, but this is actually like a plus size hot hatch, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. But you don't expect it to do like make noises like that, rotate like that. Look at that rotation. That was just, I mean, it rotated more than I expected to. I'm still getting used to it. But what an, ex this is a car that I went into this saying no one in their right mind or wrong mind would ever track this SUV. But I gotta say, after doing, I don't know, 20 laps here, I've had a ton of fun in this thing. And sure, I don't know if I'd buy this to be a track car, but if you needed a car to do all this, and this checks all of its other boxes, and you also want to take it to the track, it's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I, this is this is that car that you could drive every day. It's a hot hatch. It does it all well. And then, unlike a lot of actual hot hatches, it does track the track duty pretty well. Uh, I saw some lap times. I'm not going to disclose, um, but this car is faster than a lot of track cars. A lot of you know, Actual. typical E46 M3s and S2000s would oh, get leave them for dead. mopped up on this track. And and the, I, I I hate to get hung up in lap times, despite the fact that I work with Randy Popes so so often. 
lap times are one measure of performance, but they're not everything. No. And in fact, I'd rather a car that's interesting and I, I would rather have a Miata and just go slowly bring that, down my lap times at lap after lap after lap and work on it. Um, and to do that, the car's got to be a, a tool that does what you ask it to do. Right. This is one of those very, very rare cars that on a track does what I ask it to. That's a good point. Yeah, a lot of times you drive a car and you're driving around all of its inadequacies. Yeah. But this car is brutally potent and capable. Yeah. It's like unbelievable. And then, you know, like when was the last time you did, you saw an SUV, <laughs> electric SUV, just this easy to drift? Yeah, it's insane. Like, I mean, instant torque. Instant torque. And really, oh, we got, we got geese. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm just making turkey sounds. Well, let's follow them. Hi guys, you might want to... <laughs> Guys, come on! What are you doing? It's a racetrack. That's funny. Which I've done events here, and uh, they have said squirrels run across the track, and oh, yeah. they're like, "We know we all love animals, but if a squirrel runs across the track, do not swear. Do not swear. You will kill people. Yeah. Kill the squirrel." I yeah. This is what a phenomenal track tool. Um, with some UX updates, uh, I could see really track. Oh, look, you can you can learn the system. It's just still always going to be annoying. Um, but call me impressed. As a full N model, it really needs to do this, and it does exactly what Hyundai says it does. It's an impressive car. As much as it pains us to say it, it's a really good car. Can you give it a VIN score? <laughs> uh, I, it's hard for me to say because, you know, I think what we always talk about when it comes to cars is what your application is for it. And this car checks a lot of boxes and it's really fun. It's a, it is, it's a plus size, sort of like Lane Bryant sized hot hatch that, that happens to be electric. Um, and I'm here for it. Plus it's great looking. How do you want to end this thing? I think we just did. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. Cool. So cut. <laughs> <laughs>